ESPN has reported that the Bears will not allow Jalen Carter to get past them at the number nine pick. What does this mean for the Chicago Bears and their draft and potentially trading that number nine overall pick? We're going to talk about that. Plus, NFL Sunday ticket prices have been released. We're going to talk about that and more right after this. You are now tuned in to Chicago Bears Central, your number one place for all Chicago Bears news and content. All right, Bears fans, welcome to another episode of Chicago Bears Central, your number one spot for everything Chicago Bears related. And if you want to follow me, you can do so at CEO Hayes. If you want to follow the show, you can do so at Shy Bears Central. But let's get into it. Matt Miller from ESPN has reported yesterday that the Chicago Bears will not allow Jalen Carter to drop past them at number nine. So what does that mean, right? Even though it's been looked at as more likely that he does not pass the Seattle uh, Seahawks or the Detroit Lions number five and six. The, with the pre-draft process and what it's been for Jalen Carter, there is still some concern that he may fall. Now, one of the biggest conversations that we've been having here around this channel is just that, you know, the character concerns around Jalen Carter, the motor concerns around Jalen Carter, the ability to put in the work to be a great defensive lineman at the NFL level. There's been some talk and, and conversation around that. Now, Considering that Jalen Carter coming into this draft with those characters concerns we looked at as being a potential generational level talent, him getting past the Bears in that conversation has always been something that Bears fans have wanted. I know a lot of Bears fans, B. John Robinson, Jackson Smith, and Jigba has been in the conversation, even though I told you guys yesterday, neither one of those are happening. But with that being said, uh, Matt Miller said this. If the investigation had determined otherwise, Mr. Carter would have been charged with far more serious offenses of vehicular homicide and serious injury by a vehicle under Georgia law, but both felony charges and would have faced a lengthy prison sentence. So it, Hey, it doesn't seem like he's going to be charged with anything. And maybe now that that has come out, maybe that kind of moves some things with him right now. He did come into his pro day, um, out of shape, which, which caused even more concerns weighing in at 323 pounds, nine pounds heavier than what he just was at the NFL combine, which was only two weeks before the pro day. Right. So those concerns around Jalen Carter have been there. But one of the things that, you know, the Bears needing the talent that they have, having a, a position of need as well in Jalen Carter, one of the biggest things there was this, right, is that if you do get him and if you can work that out and you have to believe in your culture, your coaching staff, whatever else enough, that if you can get that out of him, you have a generational level talent. You have a defensive tackle that can then potentially be there for you, for your line, for the next handful of years that you don't have to worry about that position. And so it's left a lot of, of concern, wonder about what the Bears are going to do with that number nine pick if Jalen Carter does fall to them. Even in the rumor that came out yesterday that the Bears and Steelers may have had talks about uh, them moving up to number nine, I even said then, maybe it's going to be if Jalen Carter doesn't fall to that. But while the common mindset, and probably the correct one is, if Jalen Carter's there at number nine, the Bears are going to draft him, they're going to keep him. But keep in mind this, Ryan Poles is a uh, strategist, right? And so with that being said, how there is a potential of this Jalen Carter nonsense to just be, not, not nonsense, that, that sounds derogatory, but it, there is a chance that Ryan Poles may look at this situation with Jalen Carter and say, hey, listen, I'll draft him at number nine. That doesn't mean we still won't flip him in the same draft because once you have that talent, you can open up the doors for talking to get other picks, other prospects back for teams that, maybe just at that time didn't think that they can move up to number nine or, or maybe doubted his ability to fall to number nine. It just opens the door for, for more things that Ryan Poles to do. But my mindset is if Jalen Carter is there at number nine, you take Jalen Carter. You keep him. You bring him into your team. You trust your culture enough that, yes, you're still building. Yes, you're still establishing. Yes, you're still getting that together. But mentor him, right? Find a mentor him. You Use some of those uh, veterans that you have in whether like to, to just mentor him. Keep the coaches on him. Now, you want a player to find their own motivation correctly. And Jalen Carter, even coming into his pro day, weighing nine pounds heavier than he did at the combine. Listen, with the legal shit he had going on, humanness comes in and maybe it was just stress from that. Maybe, right? I'm just giving, giving a little bit of looking at it from both sides, right? Playing devil's advocate to my own point. There are absolutely legitimate concerns around Jalen Carter. But there's absolutely legitimate reason to say concerns be damned draft a player that you came into this draft thinking could be a generational guy for you, right? And I understand both mindsets. I understand the Bears fans that say, hey, let's avoid the headache, right? Let's go after a Miles Murphy. Let's go after a Tyree Wilson. Let's go after these guys who have these huge motors that work, want it, and you don't doubt. Maybe they don't have the ceiling of a Jalen Carter, but they have uh, still tons of talent, starting level talent. They can still be a big factor of your team for years and years and years to come. I also understand the people who have the mindset, get as many blue chip guys as you can, 
character concerns, let's not worry about the character concerns. We've seen people in the NFL, though, come in with character concerns that eventually end up hurting and maybe limiting or, or drastically affecting their NFL career. So at the end of the day, the Bears have a decision to make. And I still doubt that Jalen Carter is going to fall there. I still have my doubts. I won't lie. I don't necessarily think that Jalen Carter, like Detroit, the Detroit Lions who need just as much talent. Yeah, it's Detroit and bringing in Jalen Carter to a city like Detroit. Right, listen, right, listen, I know people in Detroit may get in their feelings about that, but you got to worry about that, right? Um, but if he does make it past there, if he does, if he by luck, chance, happenstance, whatever you want to call it, ends up falling to the Bears at number nine, I think the Bears should draft him. Let me know what you guys think down below. Do you think the Bears should draft Jalen Carter if he falls to them at number nine? Or do you, do you think they should still draft him, maybe look to flip it? What do you think they should do ultimately if Jalen Carter is there at number nine, right? Do you think that he's going, that we're going to be able to, to, to mold him and, and to have those, those character, those workout concerns, the motor concerns? Do you think that this culture that we're building, do you think that we have enough to, to want it, right? So let me know what you guys think on that. There's a lot, and like I said, room for both mindsets. I don't want to overlook that, but you just never know. You just never know what's going to happen. And when you have questions around a player and you're spending and you're spending a draft pick that that's that that's damn high, you want to make sure that you're going to get a guy who's going to come in and want to work. That's going to come in and want to be there. You're going to have to come in and not have to to try to manage a personality that you don't need to. That's just going to come in and work. Now, with the Bears having first round pick in this in this draft. I want to look at some of the worst, and this list actually came out, I believe this was from Bleach Report, of the worst first-round picks in Chicago Bears history, and I want to go through, deal with the trauma with me. I want to share my trauma with you guys. So the first one up on this list, and let me know what you guys think, is this the worst first-round draft pick by the Bears ever? It's Cade McNown uh, in 1999. He was picked at pick 12. Pick 12. He's considered the worst quarterback in Chicago Bears history. He only started 15 games and had a record of 3-12. and he had a 16 to 19 touchdown interception ratio, uh, ratio and then we traded him to the uh, to the Miami Dolphins in 2001, and he never played another game in the NFL. Next one up in 1998, the year before that, uh, Curtis Ennis, pick number five, right, uh, running back, and so a player that had tons of promise coming into the NFL, right. And when you look at the players that were uh, selected after him, Randy Moss. Fred Taylor. These were players that were selected after that, right? And in his Torres ACL in the ninth game of the 1998 season, he had his best year in 1999 when he rushed for 916 uh, yards and three touchdowns, but had 3.2 yards per carry, and he was out of the league by 2000, right? Definitely bad pick. Next up, Kevin White, drafted in 2015, pick number seven. Um, and so this guy seemed like he was going to be a star coming into this league. But when you look at like just the thing, not a lot of catches, not a lot of touchdowns. I think he only played 14 games. Uh, he ended up getting traded to the, the 49ers and the Saints. But listen, never able to really jumpstart his career again. Crazy. It, like the Bears have had some damn bad luck in the first round. David Terrell, another one. Pick number eight in 2000. Listen, that is, listen. 128 catches, 1,602 yards uh, in four years with the Bears. Um, he was cut in 2005. Very short to career after that. So, um, it, listen, we've had some bad first-round picks. Another one, defensive end Michael Haynes, 2003, pick number 14. Like, this is crazy. Like, great year in Penn State. Came in, never really had a big season for the Bears. Uh, he had five and a half sacks in his, in his whole Chicago Bear career. And then he was out of the league by 2007 after being drafted in 2003. So what? All this trauma, what that means? Let's hope that we avoid that in the way that we, that we draft this year. We don't want to have any of those guys. We don't want to have any of those guys in the first round. Let's hope that we can avoid that, man. Um, but next up, before we go, the price of NFL Sunday ticket came out. And initially it was rumored, and it was a lot higher. They actually come out and said there's an introductory price. So if you already have YouTube TV and you add Sunday ticket on, for the season, if you do that by, uh, I believe it's June 1st in the pre-sale, $249. That's a special launch with $100 off, so it's $349 if you, do, if you wait to do it during the season. Now, if you don't have YouTube TV and you just want to add it on uh, to YouTube, uh, it's going to be $289 on the introductory price with $100 off, but $389 if you wait during the season, right? So look out for that. I, I just want to bring it up to you guys. Well, no, I actually, that, that's if you want to add on NFL Red Zone. 
if you're just adding on NFL Sunday ticket as a presale, it's actually $349 for the season. That's $100 off the actual price of $449. They are smoking dick with these prices. But hey, it is what it is. I wanted to put that out to you guys because if you do have to get Sunday ticket, we got Bears fans that don't live in Chicago. If you need Sunday ticket, get that pre-sale price because it's shooting up and it's going to be expensive, especially if you're not a member of YouTube TV. So look out for that. But that is it for today's daily episode of Chicago Bears Central. Make sure you guys are following the show at Shy Bears Central. You can send us any feedback, questions, comments, concerns, chicagobearscentral.gmail.com. Lastly, you want to leave a text message and or voicemail because tomorrow is mailbag episode day, 773-242-9336. We are the number one spot for everything Chicago Bears related because of you guys. And like I liked in every episode on, go Bears. Love you guys. Bear down, y'all. Peace. This has been a presentation of the Break Break Media.